More than half the population over 16 are now fully vaccinated. Almost 80% of adults have received their first dose of the vaccine. There's no sign of it slowing down yet either, but it will. It was a slow start because we didn't have the supply to meet demand until the end of August. Now the vaccine rollout is among the fastest in the world. Joining me live now is Lieutenant General John Fruin. He is the leader of Australia's vaccine task force. Now your job is a lot easier today than it was a couple of months ago when I spoke to you, uh, General Fruin, but we've just seen an explosion of cases in Victoria, a jump of 500. Is there anything you can do to rush more vaccines to Victoria or help with speeding up the rollout? Yeah, hi, Laura. Great to be with you. Um, yeah, look, we're working closely with the Victorian authorities. In fact, I've just uh, got off one interchange with them uh, as we walked down here this morning. Uh, we'll be working with them today to do everything we can to make sure we get all available uh, uh, vaccines, particularly mRNA vaccines, to them, um, you know, this week, next week, as best we can. OK, well, that, that is certainly helps, but, you know, uh, supply isn't the issue any anymore. Uh, demand is certainly growing and we've seen good higher rates there. Now, Australians have really embraced it. Does it show that we would have done this earlier, but we just didn't have enough vaccines? Well, Laura, we've uh, had access to AstraZeneca, that very uh, effective vaccine uh, throughout this. Um, as we've discussed before, it has been uh, access to the mRNA vaccines that's been constrained, but the amount of vaccines that we've got coming through October now, both uh, Pfizer and Moderna, um, it, you know, really means that it isn't about supply. We're right at a tipping point now where supply stops being the, the primary constrainer in the MRA vac mRNA vaccines, mm. um, and it's all about demand from here on in, and we've got fantastic rates of vaccination so far. Uh, you said my, my job's got a whole lot easier. Well, uh, there's still a lot of hard work to be done and we've, we've got to make sure that people keep coming forward and I really implore people to keep doing so. Yeah, indeed there is. So more mRNA vaccines are on the way, Pfizer and Moderna. Now, every month we kind of wait to hear for what our allocation will be. Do we have that allocation for October and November? Has it dropped or has it stayed at those high levels? Now, look, from... Um uh, with Pfizer, they uh, they confirm progressively with us. So they've they've confirmed the first three weeks of October. We're just waiting on the final week of October. But we've got the the indicative numbers that we'll get for the whole year. So uh, you know we know the total amount we'll have by the end of the year with Pfizer. We've got uh, you know mm. strong indications of exactly okay, so, what we'll get. So, with so what are they? Because the so your there's horizons, plenty of vaccines. Yeah. yeah, your horizons did show two million a week of Pfizer. So is that on track? Yeah, yeah, no, we'll, uh, we've got uh, 9 million uh, approximately of Pfizer we expect in October. Uh, we've got another 2 million of Moderna on top of that. Uh, sorry, 3 million of Moderna on top of that in October. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that'll sort of repeat through the year. But we'll have by this, during October, we'll have enough vaccines in the country to get everyone fully vaccinated. Laura. So, yeah, so over 12s now um, can get Moderna and Pfizer. Anyone over 12 can get Moderna and Pfizer in New South Wales. But that's not the, the case right yep. around the country yet. Why not? Yeah, so look, we've um, we've given the states and territories the option to open up to the over 60s. Uh, we think that's been uh, appropriate uh, from now. Uh, some of them have chosen to do that. They've been comfortable with where they're at. Uh, New South Wales have made that decision just last night. Um, the, the vaccines are here now. Uh, you talk about the 12 to 15 year olds. We've had uh, more than 400,000 12 to 15 year olds come forward just over the last fortnight. That's 33% mm. of 12 to 15 year olds have had their first dose. Uh, and predominantly that's been work Moderna through the pharmacies. Uh, fantastic convenience. So, uh, you know, that's, that's moving really well through there. We're also seeing pockets of hesitancy, which you would expect. Can you identify why and where the biggest problem areas are? Yeah, so we're watching really carefully. I mean, you, you gave the, the great vaccine rates. You know, more than three quarters of the country now have had their first dose. So we're over 54% fully vaccinated. Um, but we're watching where those pockets are and there are very specific communities that we're working with now. I mean, the Indigenous sector is a, is a concern for us and that's our, our highest priority right now to help bring them along. Um, there are cultural and linguistic groups. There are some socioeconomic groups. Now, each of these groups have, uh, you know, very specific uh, requirements and very uh, specific sort of views that we need to work on. And we're, we're working on getting the right communications and the right uh, influences and community leaders to, to help us bring those groups along.
OK, let's talk about freedom, because in New South Wales, it feels really close, I've got to say. But, you know, freedom for the unvaccinated doesn't come until we reach 90% double dose. Gladys Berejiklian has said that will be around the 1st of December. Is that going to happen? We haven't seen the slowdown yet, but, but what are we talking across the country? Is it realistic to get to 90%? Yeah, so look, the, the national plan has 70% and 80% as the as sort of the triggers for the for the progressions there. Some of the states and territories are talking about more. But where we are right now, we it, it is possible for us to get to 70% uh, fully vaccinated by the end of October. Uh, we think nationally we could get to 80% uh, by the middle of November. And it's also conceivable we could get to 90% uh, around the end of November, start of December. But the factor now is is people coming forward. And international mm -hmm. experience shows us that once you get past 70%, uh, things do start to slow down. So that's why uh, I'm saying there's still a lot of hard work to do. We can't let people get complacent. We've got to no. keep our foot on the pedal. And we really need people coming forward and urging others to come forward to help protect all of us and help get us to those numbers which we can get to. Yeah, We've so got the distribution saying... points. We've got the convenience of access. Sorry, so what you're yep. saying is uh, for the unvaccinated, you know, they might be hanging out to, to get to 90% and think, oh, well, they can get away with not getting a vaccine. But that might not happen till well beyond December if that, you know, that tipping point is reached. Yeah, look, there are, there are people who are unvaccinated now who are still getting around to it. Uh, we hope increasing convenience will, will bring them along. There are some who are still making up their minds and we also hope to to help turn them around, both through, uh, you know, education and, uh, and advertising and the like, but, and hopefully friends and peers will encourage them. But there are also people in areas where there are not outbreaks, and this has been another significant factor mm. in some of the complacency. And, you know, the thing with Delta is it's going to get to, to everywhere eventually and, uh, you know, potentially, and it, when it does, it goes fast. So I really implore people to maintain a sense of urgency around vaccination. I mean, I would not be complacent about vaccination at all. And now that it is getting simpler and simpler to get vaccinated, it's the time to, to do it, Laura. Yeah, and we're seeing that in Queensland, aren't we? Because they haven't had a significant outbreak. That might all change within a week. Mm. Could do. And, uh, you know, and hopefully, uh, you know, again, we're, we're moving uh, additional supplies and additional points of presence into to every area around the country now. So... Mm. Just keep encouraging people. Keep turning up. OK. What about booster shots? When are those <laughs> going to be rolled out? Yeah, well, let's, uh, the Department of Health is, is developing the policies around that. I mean, the science is still out on boosters and it's not my uh, primary area of responsibility. But, I, I, you know, I think there will probably uh, be some options around boosters before the end of the year. Of course, this is about protecting the most vulnerable. So, uh, like with the vaccine program, the, the first priority will be to those people who, who need the, the boosters most to, to keep them safe. Uh, and the science is still being finalised around that, uh, around the world. Mm. Um, but we'll be ready to support with that as soon as uh, we're required to. And supply, no longer an issue? The vaccines are coming. Uh, soon we'll have full choice across the country for all of the available vaccines. Um, and AstraZeneca will sort of remain, uh, you know, Pfizer is, is coming on. Um, still through an increasing number of GPs and Moderna, particularly through the pharmacists who are doing a great job. We've got almost 2,800 pharmacies now across the countryside uh, and people are turning up in droves, which is great to see. That is great news. General Fruin, thanks so much for your time, as always. Thanks, Laura.